Good evening, good day, and uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, one of our mid 20th uh, live stream as far as times have gone. And today I've decided to uh, kind of take out a payware plane. Normally I don't drag one of these, but I was going, I need something to fly around in the Andes Mountains. And the first thing that came to mind, of course, was up Pan Am. So I said, hey, uh, let's make things overcomplicated for myself and I grab this DC 6 here. Again, I'm not endorsing it. We'll just take it for a spin, kind of a good time. For those of you joining us tonight, now uh, make sure you have your settings all set up like this. I've got ECOSA, all players is visible. My current weather, by the way, for those of you who are looking for my weather standard, I've just got high level clouds. It seems to be pretty good as far as it goes. We're going to be passing by one of the largest of the mountains in the Andes region today. So this is going to be an amazing exercise in both climbing as well as an insane approach basically to a runway that has 9,600 feet of ground before you hit ocean. It's uh, pretty neat. I think you guys are going to kick out of it. So let's get this thing going. Um, I've already got this started. Uh, one of the reasons I started early today is because I knew it would take me ages to get this thing actually rolling to the point where we can uh, reliably fly it around. So I'm just going to go take it over to the runway and I will go ahead and get started off today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill off the brakes here. I just cannot get over the sheer size of this thing, but again, it should be fine. For those of you who are wondering why it's uh, looking a little bit like a 787 or an airliner, it's just again a, an issue as far as everything goes and graphics and stuff like that. Don't sweat it too, too much. And I can see uh, we got Mobius on the end here. Uh, welcome back, by the way. And he seems to be sporting one of the regular airliners, which you are going to way outspeed me for this particular one. So this will be a lot of fun. We're going to pop my flaps down to the 20 degrees position. Oh, welcome back, Ted. Excellent. We're just going to come sneaky sneak here. And again, this is a big old uh, prop airliner. I love airplanes like this. They are just so much work to fly. And again, for somebody like me, this is pretty enjoyable. We're just going to kind of bump along. We'll go ahead and pull my controls all the way back. And we'll just kind of gently come along this way. Speaking of controls, I'm going to go ahead and release my little brake here, which uh, stops my controls from working. Give them a pull. Ah, nice. Excellent. All right, I'm going to come swinging right around the corner here. And we'll get going. So our initial takeoff today, we're going to be flying uh, pretty much due west here. And we're going to be going through some, like I said, very, very tall mountains. This aircraft is not really known for its climbing capability, which is going to make things kind of interesting. Uh, cruise speed today, um, when we finally do get up to altitude, I can probably get this thing up to 240 on a good day. I will definitely not be able to hit 300 unless I'm in some kind of descent here. All right, going to bring us over. And we'll go ahead and get ready for our uh, takeoff checks here. Again, this is a slightly more complicated plane than I normally fly, but that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and get out of this guy's way. He's doing a nice job for me already. I'm just going to give it the rumbly brumblies and get out of the way. I love how everything jitters. That's just so much fun. All right, we're going to go swing around here and get this thing going. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward, pretty easy flight today, other than the fact there's um, some absolutely positively massive mountains we're going to have to get blowing by here. And like when I say massive, I mean these are huge mountains. You just will not believe them. All right, we'll go ahead and select that takeoff. We'll make sure everything looks good. Flaps are good. I'll make sure my controls are working the way they need to. We'll give everything a little jiggle there. It seems like it's fine. Uh, welcome back, Simon. Welcome back, Laffel. Um, Fast Ted, uh, welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. Winter Bridge, welcome back. Motorboat, welcome back. Weezing Geek, I forget if I remember you. Sorry if I forgot. All right, let's do it to it. I'm just going to push a button. Uh, we have our destination. We are Sierra Papa Golf Mike, and our destination today is going to be, uh, give me just a second here, it's going to be Sierra Papa Hotel Zulu, which is up. You know, it's about a 100-mile well, ride, which isn't too bad for us. It's going to take us about maybe about 36, 37 minutes, something like that. All right, we're revving this sucker up. Again, these are gigantic engines, which we're going to have to be kind of babying this entire flight today in order to kind of keep these things from blowing up on us. All right, we're at full power. We're going to wait for the thing to come up the rest of the way. Here we go. Off we go. Uh, weather, I have high clouds, for those of you who are interested in weather. I'm not going to do anything extreme. When we did this uh, back in the Andes ages ago, when we did Peru and we looked at the Nazca lines, uh, one of the problems we had was the visibility was Garbo, and we didn't actually get to enjoy much of it. All right, one of the most fascinating things is despite the size of this plane, it still pulls up at the same speed as the TVM, and I think that's kind of cool. All right, it looks a little bit like somebody put an airplane in the middle of things here. Oop, um, beep, beep, beep. Kind of got to get accelerating, doing 100 knots, and we're going to go ahead and pull back. I don't want to imagine how hard it is to actually pull back the controls on something this old. And we are going up. Oh man, look at these mountains. These are the little ones. Wait, you see the ones later. I'm trying really hard not to pull up too hard here and stall the thing out on a climb. Nice and easy. I'm just going to swing over to the left. Now, one of the things that makes this flight tremendously challenging, as you're going to see when we get towards the other end, is basically we have to go from 20,000 feet to 9,000 feet off the side of a mountain. 
so well. Obviously, we didn't bring our skis with us, so that's going to make things a little more challenging for us. I'm actually going to bring myself about 10 miles to the south or so, so that I can swing around and come down the valley. Uh, once you get there and once you see it, you'll understand exactly what I mean. This is actually one of my favorite approaches on Earth. All right, I'm just going to come swinging around the corner here. And we are on our way. Excellent. Now, folks behind me will be amazed how not fast I am. <laughs> Once we get in a cruise, it's not too bad. But like I said, we got to climb up to about 18,000 feet to safely get over the mountain range. There we go. Ooh, getting a little bit of chop from the tops of those mountains. I'm amazed we're even able to clear these mountains, to be honest. Kind of reminds me of uh, one of those old bomber movies when you just constantly hear the drone of the F-4 propellers just kind of going at it the whole time. So old school. I'm going to swing to my left just a little bit here, and we're going to start making our way to our destination airport. Looks pretty good. All right, let's do it. Level off uh, roughly in this direction. This is going to do a pretty good job for us. Looking pretty good. Our climb speed is about 160 as far as the VY goes. You can pretty much keep that all the way up to the maximum altitude here. All right, I would continue my left turn here to get us lined up, but there's a pretty nasty mountain in the way, so I'm just going to kind of have to hold it like it is. All right, that's looking pretty good. And a little more trim. There we go. I love the autopilot on this thing. It's it's ancient. You flip a switch. And we go down here, and we flip a handle. <laughs> just old school. Uh, welcome, Wrath of Storage. Uh, the server, we're in the East USA server currently. So if you want to join us, uh, just make sure you go ahead under multiplayer. There's an option that says all players. You've got to push that button, otherwise uh, you're not going to become licking on up with us. All right, let's get this thing going up a little bit here. There we go. That should do it. And we are on our way, like I said, for the 30th time. Cool. I'm actually going to come to my left a little bit here. So I'm actually going to take this big knob and you actually rotate it. And it actually will go ahead and tilt the plane and take us over to where we need to go. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. I know it's the Top Gear reference for SLS, but I do not know the uh, Viagra height yet. I'm not sure which one that is, but uh, we will pass by a mountain that is literally 20,000 feet high. This is like basically the Himalayas of uh, South America here. You know, the Andes, the other Himalayas. Love that sound. Now this is real cool. When we're done with our turn, what we do is there's this little button, and you just push the button and it resets the wheel. And it goes ahead and snaps it back to center. Oh man, I love that. Oh man. Now imagine taking a hike here. Like you just I'm gonna go on a little hike and you get up to about this altitude, which I'm gonna check real quickly. Yeah, we're at six thousand feet here, and you're just like kind of roughing it down here you know every single little bush and snake and spider and puma basically are going to be hanging around in here and you're going to be so far away from civilization it's not even funny I shouldn't say ever say civilization i'll say far away from you know hospital how's that sound okay so now this is amazing so basically what we do is you come into the foothills here the foothills empty out and then if you look super ultra carefully in the distance you're going to see snow-capped mountains we're going to have to get over the top of those it's like the mountains of madness kind of a thing going on I'm going to check all my engine systems here, make sure we're not overheating. Uh, we're well within 200 degrees, oil pressure's fine, oil temperature's fine. Uh, the carburetor heat is a little cold on that side, but it's not going to give me any issues. That's why we have a flight inspector, a flight engineer. Let's take a look outside. Uh, let's see, we have Fast Ted over there on the right, I'm looking behind him. Uh, Simon, you forgot to put up your landing gear, Chief. Uh, let's see, Moby, that's amazing that you can get that airplane that slow. <laughs> uh, Laffle Rog, uh, awesome, all right up there on the left here. Weezing Geek, uh, Robert Fisher Music, interesting. SDO, we haven't seen you in a while. Loaded Alarm, I feel like I didn't see you in a while, but that's all right. A Motorboat, welcome back. Reaper MD, welcome back. I'm just looking around real quickly here. The Real Play-Doh. Hmm, I thought the Real Play-Doh passed a couple years ago. I don't know what the deal with that is. Go ahead and slap this uh, down just a teeny tiny bit. And we are in good, good, good shape. A couple more notches down. I love how it's just a little click, click, and the nose comes down just a little bit. So I'm not quite as sophisticated as we're used to, but you know what it is? It is pressurized. Speaking of which, what's the temperature in here? Yikes. I'm going to set the temperature to the exact temperature where all the stewardesses are demanding that we provide um, people with blankets. And then they're going to complain to the pilot up front, and they're going to turn the heat on in the airplane, and the airplane gets too hot. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, preempt it by slamming it up to 80 here. Uh, the flight plan today is going to be a Sierra Papa Golf Mike. 
to Sierra Papa Hotel Zulu. Uh, one of the things we're going to be doing a little differently is we're actually going to come a little south. If we try to go straight in, wait until you see the approach. We have to go basically down the side of a mountain in an aircraft that's this heavy, cannot safely do that. So we have to give ourselves a lot of extra room. It's actually pretty cool. Oh, my gear is down too. Oh no. <laughs> I like the little intake for the uh, compressor. Love that. Look at how cool of a picture this is. I'm gonna have to take a picture right there. Love it. Moby Mobius, I, I, great, great, great use of that airplane there. That's just awesome. Oh, Simon, you're good. You're good. <laughs> now I'm gonna bring the nose up just a teeny tiny bit. Now, one of the things I think is another really fun thing with this particular plane, this is why I love stuff like this, is you actually have a hydraulic bypass lever, but you have an emergency hydraulic valve. Like, you know, you're so used to like on the Airbus, you just push a button for hydraulic system. You never have to actually manually select, oh, I need it on the general system. You know, you have to slam it into that mode and then reactivate it. It's just, ah, it's so old school. I love it. Look at these old ADF radios. So cool. So cool. Okay, so now we're going to proceed. Basically, like I said, we've got to get up to about 18,000 feet in order to safely get over these mountains. Then we're going to cruise, and as soon as we get over the mountains, you have to descend immediately. It's an absolutely chaotic approach. You guys are going to love it. Checking everything out, checking everything out. Looks delightful. One thing I do want to check real quickly is look how much fuel we're carrying. Unbelievable. I just want to look up at my head real fast. All right, good. The joy of multiplayer. <laughs> Actually, Simon, uh, one of the things I was talking to one of my uh, flying buddies, and he was basically saying, you know, at what point is the um, being able to share a plane just something that's built in rather than something that you need a special extension for? You know, at some point we will see that. I thought I saw two of those for a second there. Nice. What a great picture there. Love it. So cool. kind of climbing so um i have a cool thing to share with everybody today for those of you all who are watching as they were kind of flying here uh, let me go grab it real fast i think you might get a kick out of this so um i've been busy in the last two weeks and uh doing a little bit of um let's see here a little of uh this kind of thing and i uh, just want to point out in the real world that's what visibility really looks like uh, when you're flying in uh, conditions like this and now uh, when you move over here into flight simulator this is a little bit more what the actual visibility looks like so it's actually kind of fun to see the two kind of side by side whoop got past <laughs> is that a 7-4 i'm very impressed very impressed careful wrath you're a little bit <laughs> oh jeez. have fun with that let me know how that turns out Speaking of which, uh, we need to go take a look at our altitude. We're crossing a 13,000. So what we're going to have to do in a minute is we're going to have to turn our superchargers onto maximum mode here. So swinging over here, we've got these four little switches. It actually, this basically changes the gear of the supercharger. Or we're two fans, eat your hearts out. I mean, that's, that's right off of a lot of classic fighters kind of a thing. But the difference is we're all this. Oh my gosh, just look at this. Try to get a road in here. Oh, wait, oh, 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 oh. spoke too soon. Look at that, there is roads. Man, we could have done some bush flying in here. I should have thought of that. You don't have to remember this place for next time, but that's all right. I also like the fact, since there's not a lot of uh, photogrammetry, the performance is spectacular. All right, I'm going to go stick my head out the window here. And yes, I already have some amazingly fun stories uh, flying in the real world again, uh, such as the fact the stall warning on the one airplane that I like to borrow um, sounds like demons, and it's um, pretty terrifying when it starts howling in your ear. You know, the joys of uh, planes from 1975. See if I can even see this guy. Oh, there he is, right there. This is the other thing in the real world. Uh, you can't see traffic like that. You can see about, you know, about to here. You would never be able to see something down there, built it up there. Of course, could you imagine like all the mist in the mountains kind of like floating through this, like make it all like mysterious and everything like that. Take a peek behind us, see how we're doing. Winter bridge is looking good. Moby Mobius again. Oh, Laugh a Rog, you got the right idea. The little spirals there. Gonna pick something a little bit faster, but I wanted something classic because the landing is going to be chaos. Especially with all of us here. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and not 12,000 feet. We're gonna flip on these superchargers. I actually changed the mode of the superchargers. I got such a kick out of that. Right there. Alright, I feel sorry for my uh, flight inspector guy here. Everything's gonna rev up for a second, and then it's all gonna rev down for a second. There it goes. Nice. So now we are on the other thing, uh, superchargers. It's going to give us a little bit more boost here, but on my altitude and my climb rate, it's still going to be pretty glacial. Sorry. Huh. I wonder what this is. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think that got rendered properly. Either that or somebody built a really tall tower on it. I thought for a second that was a road. I was just going, you got to be kidding me. 
this is crazy. We are at 13,000 and there are mountains above us. This is, this is incredible. There they are, see them? That's what we have to get over the top of today. Don't worry, we'll get there. And then we have to get down them and you'll see exactly what I mean when we get there. Hopefully everybody's uh, practiced their really, really, really steep approaches here. The trick is just hold the nose up. Yep, there it is, is one of the tallest mountains in the Himalayas right here. Not quite Mount Everest, but you notice we've never actually flown in the Himalayas yet. We gotta do that next time, I think. Of course, what plane do you fly in the Himalayas? A fighter? Let's see a ski slope. See what everybody's doing? Now, um, hmm, Reaper MD, as in a Grim Reaper plus a medical doctor. Interesting combination. <laughs> Good question, Rissalus. That's a great question. So our in-flight to movie today is going to be Airport 75. Uh, for those of you who know who the movie Airplane, uh, that was actually a movie that was based on it. Actually, airport or airplane? Airport, sorry. And uh, there's actually a really, really fun, for those of you who have ever heard of Mystery Science Theater 3000, they actually had a movie that was um, called San Francisco International. It was supposed to be a TV series. And they did a whole parody of it that takes about an hour and a half. And it's pretty hilarious if uh, you're not familiar with Mystery Science Theater 3000. But um, they absolutely, it, it's pretty entertaining, to say the least. All right, we got 4,000 feet to go. And then we get to level off, and we actually get to accelerate. Can't wait. Oop, nose is getting up a little high there. Check this lake out. This is so cool. I do not know Duquant LV. Dade Wiggles, I love that. Tangeray, welcome back. All right, for anybody who's looking for a real fun challenge, try to get over the top of that. Obviously, if you're in a TVM or the airliner, you'll have no problem getting over the top of that. For us, we're actually gonna go this way and go down. There's a huge valley right like my mouse is here, and you're basically gonna have to go down cross another mountain and then shoot down like this in order to safely land. Of course, most of you are saying, um, why don't we just come from this way over here through this little gap and go down that way because it's like a big valley. Uh, it's no fun, I'm sorry. What we really should do is get a bunch of F-14s. Oh, we're getting F-14s. <laughs> we're actually uh, getting F-18s pretty soon. So uh, when we get the F-18s, oh yeah, we're definitely gonna do something out at Nellis. So um, get ready for your F-18 skills, folks. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful here. Look at that. I don't think many people are going to have a lake house because uh, this is probably 11,000, 12,000 feet above sea level. So this would be definitely quite the headache inducing lake house, I'm sure. And I'm just trying to see if anybody actually lives here. Every once in a while you kind of catch something, but I don't think anybody actually lives up this high. Not that I can see. Eh, maybe. Right there. And that is one heck of a lake house. Oh, there's the road to get to it. I just missed it. Right here. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, 3,000 feet to go, and then uh, we're going to go start leveling the sucker off, and I'm uh, building up some cruise speed. Yep, so um, there's the roof of the Earth in the Western Hemisphere here, for those of you interested. And incredibly, there's actually a major city. We're Not a major city, but uh, basically right off to our left, you have San Marcos, and you'll actually get a good look at it. So again, uh, you can imagine the headache here. I'd hate to just have to, have to walk to school. I mean, you always think of the stereotype of having to walk up in the snow both ways. Oh yeah, you know this place knows. All right, the real Plato's cutting ahead there. Awesome. All right, he's probably already going to do a couple practice landings before we even get there. But again, we'll be there in about 10 minutes. It's not going to be that bad. 15. Right, it's looking pretty good, pretty good. Now, a fun story from the uh, real world. Uh, when we were flying on Wednesday, our second communication radio was uh, picking up a local TV, or actually local radio. So unfortunately, uh, trying to listen to the weather, we kept getting interrupted by Michael Jackson. So it was kind of one of those situations where it was like, you know, winds 200 at hee hee, as opposed to, you know, the critical information that you actually need to know. But again, those are things that the simulator does not predict well, but it happens in the real world all the time. Oh, so this guy right up here, this is actually your uh, rudder trim. And to make things interesting is that you have your rudder trim there. If we go down here, uh, we have our good old fashioned elevator trim. And if you come all the way down here, this is actually your aileron trim. So that's what the giant wheels are for. And um, they're, they're a little serious. Usually you don't have to touch them in this plane because of the way the propellers are arranged. But it's nice to have. All right, so here's our goal. We don't want to crash into this thing. We actually want to go behind it. Like there's this little kind of uh, curve right here. And this is basically going to be our goal. For those of you who can get up to 20,000 feet in a hurry, feel free. And I go ahead and hit the top and then put your gear down and ski down the side like this or something like that. Kind of a line runner action if you'd like to. But uh, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it nice and easy and come down this. Because again, the runway we're landing at is right on the opposite side of this mountain in the valley. Right where my mouse is. You'll get a kick out of it. All right, about 1,500 feet to go. And then we'll level off and uh, speed up. Inca Roads by Zappa. Oh, Zappa's excellent. Uh, Frank Zappa. Um, 
Awesome. Very, very interesting musician. If you want to read a fun book, he's got a cool biography. And uh, let's just say he's met some interesting people on the road. And you can imagine for somebody like that as well. Fun stage stories as well. All right, take a look here. Go nice and wide. Awesome. Let's take a look at how everybody behind us is doing. Oh my, look at that. Yep. Not going to comment. Oh, welcome back to USAPR, by the way. Jeez, we got all the veterans today. Excellent. All right, 1,000 feet to go. If I, I'm pretty sure my calculations are pretty accurate. I should be pointing right at that, but it looks like I am. It's all right. I can get down this valley if I need to. It's not like I've got that synthetic vision. <laughs> Just about 18,000 feet. Let's see how my pressurization is going. Uh, did it get uncomfortably hot in the back? Oh, look at that. It's 72. That's nine. Let's freeze the passengers now. And let's see. The cabin pressure is a staggering. Let's see here. Uh, what do we got for a cabin pressure? Yeah, tolerable. <laughs> Excellent. All right. 18,000 feet. I love the altitude hold switch for this. It's literally just a click. And we are at our altitude. Oh, that's weird, David. Um, I know that uh, Microsoft has a limit to the amount of people who can render in the world at one time. So what can end up happening is you're on the top half of the list of people rendering and somebody else is on the bottom half of people rendering. You can actually run into some fun, fun kind of situations where that actually occurs. Cow flaps. <laughs> oh, no. So uh, the real Plato points out that the runway uh, should be lit. It is lit. It's actually a very long runway, but um, a warning for everybody behind me. If you've never practiced landing at high altitudes before, this is your chance to do it. Um, your approach speed does not change. So uh, don't worry too much about that. All right, we're picking up some speed. Here we go. Better buckle up, everyone. We're going to achieve speeds of three. All right, this should get us just over the tippy top of that mountain directly ahead of us. If anything, I'm actually going to bring in a teeny, 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 tiny turn. At the very least, I can kind of come through this corner rather than right at this one. And again, we're not pointing right at the airport. We're actually pointing slightly to the right of it just so that we give ourselves just enough room to actually descend. When you see how this uh, runway is laid out in the mountain that's to the left of it, you'll be like, oh, okay. Let's see where we're getting for a cruise speed here. I'm getting uh, 250. So we're moving. We're moving. Hope nobody's in a 208 behind me. Of course, I'm most of you pointing out the fact that I'm running my engines at climb power as opposed to cruise power, but eh, it's a 300 horsepower difference. It doesn't matter that much. Oh man, look at this. It went from like extremely lush and extremely green to um, windswept is the word I'm going to use here. Oh, somebody's house. It's kind of like a little bed and breakfast in the Andes Mountains. Remember, the nearest airport though is back there, so have fun with that drive. You all want to see something really cool? Try this. Yeah, let's see if I can get it to work. Oh, that's why. Let's put the top altitude, put the bottom altitude there. Is it going to work or is it going to freak out on me? Oh, I did not like that at all. And put the bottom altitude a little lower and got it. Now that is exactly what you would expect to see uh, flying through a region like this pretty much any time. So yes, if you're looking for uh, something a little bit scary, uh, feel free to try that. I'm not going to do the instrument approach in case anybody's curious here because um, I don't know what it is for this airport. I'm not sure that they have an instrument approach. I will clean up the clouds. But for now, why not? Again, those clouds are 18,000 feet high, and here's the mountain right here. <laughs> I'm going to level off my turn here. I think that's more than enough. <laughs> I guess I could talk less if you prefer. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, man, this is so cool. And there's your other bed and breakfast. This is amazing. I like the folks who are following the GPS. I'm kind of having to go north because I know exactly what's going to happen. Ooh, I guess we could kind of punch through this little gap right here, but if we try to punch through that gap, then I'm not going to have as much room to descend. We could come through here. That'd probably be even safer. Or we could just do the dumb thing and fly over the top of it. We'll see what happens. 
I have plenty of energy to spare. Up to the right just a tiny bit here. Oh man, you know if you flew into any of those, you'd crash in a second. I don't care what you say. There we go, that looks pretty good. Okay, so here's how the approach is going to work. Basically, we're going to pass over the town of Haraz, and we're going to take a right turn. Uh, you're looking for a runway. It's a runway tree four. So uh, for those of you who are using GPS, uh, when you line yourself up so you're basically due north, you're going to take a right. There's going to be a mountain on your left. You have to get over that mountain and then down into the valley and basically stop. <laughs> no, don't talk less of instrumental music. No, that's awesome. I appreciate it. I'm trying to think of all the other fun adventures we've had flying this week. Um, so we've had this thing called a hurricane. And let's just say it tends to turn beautiful weather into, you know, that and extremely strong winds. Yeah, I'm going to fly right into the side of that thing, aren't I? Oh, boy. All right, let's turn. Fine. I'm going to try to aim right for this spot right here. That'll do it. Believe it or not, you can fly an ILS approach in this. Everybody ready for the descent? This is going to get crazy. Moby Mobius, good job. You must uh, be basically a whole, hanging off the uh, jet engines there. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Okay. This is going to be unfun. Let's go ahead and reset the weather there. Oh, it would be a shame if something happens to this weather. Uh, we'll just make the cover zero. Boink. And look at that. The weather cleared up. Thank God. I did not want to try to do an approach that did not have visibility here. And for the chap who's doing this at nighttime, um, careful. And for the real pros, I'll feel free to go ahead and top the top of that guy. Like I said, that's a, one of the tallest mountains you're going to get in this part of the world. I believe that's a wreck, sir. In case you're curious, it's a Novalo wreck. Is the one right off to the right here. Um, I'm not liking this. We'll be fine. I'm doing for a cruise speed here. I'm getting 291. Oh, I'm moving now gonna lose all of it in a second I lost a few folks in the back but that's all right so uh wonder it really depends on what you like to fly i mean i've, I've said that a million times and it really depends on how much work you want if i shut off the automatic uh in flight engineer in this aircraft it's it, they, basically, I'd be flying the plane from the engines right now. I wouldn't really be paying attention where I'm going. It gets that complicated. All right. I'm actually going to cut off the autopilot once I clear this one. Right. Actually, I'm going to cut it off right now. That switch. And click this switch. All right. Let's do it to it. All right. You ready for a really crazy landing? You're going to love this. Um, so as far as steam gauges goes, um, generally the age of the plane, if it's an older plane, like, you know, like a Cessna 170 or 140 or something, that's going to be pretty ancient as far as steam gauges goes. One of the things you're going to have an issue with is as you start to get aircraft that are older, you're more less likely to have um, instruments that you can use for the purposes of instrument navigation. So it's just something you have to kind of keep in the back of your head. Okay, here we go. This is the valley. So we're going to have to shoot down the valley and take a left here. This is going to be a uh, chaos, basically. Go ahead and shut him off real quick. Oop, don't shut the engines off, otherwise we'll freeze them and they'll all lock up on me. Um, other things to think about, um, the regular Cessna actually can come in that version. The regular 152 actually comes with uh, steam gauges if you're into that kind of a thing. And I know, um, I think Just Flight has a really, really nice arrow as well. So I think they're doing an Archer pretty soon. Okay, everybody ready for the approach? <laughs> this is going to be annoying. Oh yeah, so uh, Riceless, I totally agree with you that I would love to see like an old like a Lockheed Delta or something like that. You know, something that's a really, 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 really old school or like in a 1930s vintage kind of an old school plane. You know, like where the instruments don't behave. Love that stuff. All right, here we go. Let's kind of kind of come to the right a little bit here. Love how when you're at high speeds, you basically don't have to push the rudder with this thing. It's great. I'm actually going to pop open my cow flaps here, help with the cooling. Uh, but to continue answering your question, Wanderer, it, it comes down to what you like to fly. I mean, there's a plane, oh, I can't forget, the Blario, if you want something that literally doesn't have instrumentation in it because it's that old. If you're looking for something really steam gaugey, 
Otherwise, like I said, I'll go take a look at what Just Flight has. I know Carinado, again, everybody's kind of correct me in about half a second here. I have a couple of really, really nice offerings too, depending on what you're looking for. Again, the systems aren't gonna be crazy. If the, if the plane's less than 20 bucks, it's probably not gonna be that complicated, but it can still be a lot of fun. All right, here we go. All right, so this is how this works. You guys are gonna love this. So if you take a look right where my mouse is here, this is a mountain that basically guards the approach here. The approach is actually on the left side of this after you cross over this. So you have to go down and into the valley with it. So what I'm going to do is basically hover along that valley that's straight ahead. And as soon as I get to the edge, I'm going to put myself in landing configuration and then drop, I kid you not, like 8,000 feet. It's going to be fun. But check make sure my RPMs are all set correctly and everything like that. Whoop, it wasn't. Engine temperature is actually getting a little bit cold, but that's all right. A little bit to the left here. Nice. Uh, we're supposed to be getting a Lockheed Constellation a little bit later this summer also. Um, fingers crossed, this is complicated. All right, here we go. See, Fast Ted has the right idea there because he's just going to go down the valley. I don't have room to do that. <laughs> I have to come in real slow. All right, I'm just going to kind of hover along this edge of the valley here. And down we go. I feel sorry for the person in the Airbus, um, but you have speed brakes. I don't, so maybe I'm not feeling sorry. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> oh, no. So the real play, it'll take your mouse to the top of the screen, click on weather. And this little bar right here is your best friend in the universe. Just click and drag that, and your problem is instantly solved. Oh, make sure you uncheck live, by the way, or it won't work. Now, the interesting thing is if you look really, really carefully, you're going to notice there's another runway right here. This isn't actually the runway we're going to be using today. Actually, take it back. That is the runway we're going to be using today. I got my mountains confused. It's this one right here. And that's what happens when I don't pay attention. All right, we're going to have to start slowing this aircraft down. We're basically going to have to come down like a falling leaf kind of thing here because I'm going way too fast. Sorry, passengers' ears. I'm sorry, passengers' ears. I'm sorry, passengers' ears. <laughs> to the right here. Oh, my gosh. Yep. That was their approach. You wouldn't normally want to do this with a passenger airplane, but um, extreme situations call for extreme awesomeness. Look at that. <laughs> I'm going to end up doing S-turns like a glider to get me down. Oh, this is not good. I'm losing 2,000 feet per minute right now. I need to get just slow enough to put down the landing gear. Then I can start slowing down. Of course, the real pilot of me would point out the fact you can just lift the nose and then dump everything, which is what I'm going to have to do here. Doing an overhead approach in an airliner. I love it. There we go. Start getting ready for landing. Oh, you're going to have to lose a lot of altitude. Oh my gosh, this thing handles terribly for stuff like this. Whoop, sorry, passengers. Let's do it. <laughs> this is so crazy. All right, I finally lost enough energy to begin my approach. Oi. Yeah, I got the barn doors. You're not wrong. And by the way, the barn doors, um, the one of the Cessnas that I do fly, it's a 172 from 1975. It has flaps 40. So if you ever think that um, you've come in too fast on a particular approach or something like that, you put those things down in the plane. The word I'm going to use is sinky, because that's what it does. All right, let's uh, line ourselves back up now that we've lost half of that altitude we needed to lose. I think that's a non-standard procedure. All right, keeping an eye on everything. We're getting a little cool in the engines, but that's all right. Still going too fast. Checking to make sure everything looks okay. <laughs> Could you imagine approaching like this with the real plane? Everybody would be screaming in the back. This would be awesome. All right. Believe it or not, my approach speed is 110. That's just so much slower than you'd expect it to be. Now we're going to rev our engines up to full blast here. They act as giant speed brakes for us. And then we're just going to put this thing nice and gentle on the ground. 
That looks like an awfully narrow runway for an airplane this size, but I'm not too worried about it. Off to the right, a little bit of a crosswind going on here, but nothing too bad. You know, we're going to do a slip in an airliner. Uh-oh, Wrath of Schwartz, you're not looking so good there. I believe you just bounced. Exactly. All right, actually going to start bringing in a little bit of power here because this thing's going to start sinking like a stone. All right, sterile cockpit. And we're down. That crosswind was a lot more intense than I expected. And we made it. Woo! What a flight. Oh my. We're here. <laughs> Almost killed us, but we're here. All right. I'm going to go park over by the little uh, fuel gate right here. And we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and, uh, take our little picture that we always take. And I'll probably go find something nice to crash this into. Of course, uh, I will uh, make sure I murder... Actually, I shouldn't murder anybody. I'll empty out all the passengers before I do it. Because that just wouldn't be appropriate. Oh, here we go. All right. Go spin around here. Nice. Man, what a flight. I thought you guys would get a kick out of that approach. That's pretty steep. All right. I'm going to kind of sneak my way over here. Looks good. I always like to kind of point this way and hold the brakes. Nice. I guess I should instruct my co-pilot to uh, begin the after take after landing particular maneuver here. After landing, go ahead and uh, set the plane up with whatever it needs to do. All right. Let's get ready for our little picture here. I like how this dude's just like chilling, but he's not even with us. Now, this seems suspiciously like some kind of advertisement. I'm just I'm conjecturing a little bit here. I like the flashing lights motorboat. That's classy. Oop. We got a couple more folks coming up. I'll wait until they come in. I thought you guys would like that approach because that was insane. Nice, Reaper MD. You just, <laughs> just kind of go. So we did this to a Cirrus today. Uh, we actually blocked him from taking off in this little teeny tiny runway, and he wasn't so thrilled about it. But too bad. We were there first. All right, I'm going to quickly take a little picture. Actually, I want to get a little of the mountain this time. Look at that. That is just so cool. Oh, the real Play-Doh. I forgot that guy. Take a picture. Nice. Uh oh, we got Tango Ray coming. I'm sorry. 1970. Tango Ray, I think, is a form of gin. I could be wrong on that one. Oh, it's Tango Ray. Okay, maybe not. We got one of the person, USAPRs, coming in for a landing. Nice. All right, so uh, we get to the end of the live stream. I always like to take a couple minutes to see if anybody has any questions. Again, if there's anything... Oh, my gosh. If there's uh, anything uh, you folks would like to see a videos of or anything along those lines, uh, this would be a great time to go ahead and throw it in the chat if you'd like to, and I'll, I'll do the best I can to respond. Afterwards, of course, uh, we'll come and uh, do my little uh, grand finale thing that I always do. Coming up next week, uh, I've got a couple uh, different private pilot kind of maneuvers, and I'll be kind of giving you a couple more cool stories of what's going on with me with my own flying, which has been a lot of fun recently. And uh, hopefully I can bring some videos into that as well. Let's wait until he sneaks in here. This is great. We had a great turnout. And again, thank you folks for coming by as always. Uh, I think it's super duper exciting. Uh, great choices of airplanes here. I know I uh, kind of stole the expensive uh, sketchy one that nobody really needs, but I had to. It was just so cool. I'm sorry. All right. Let me go ahead and empty out my passengers. Again, I'll take any questions that you folks have. I'll go ahead and press that button right here. Let's go ahead and see. After takeoff, we'll go ahead and empty out all of our passengers. I wonder how much oil we burnt on the last flight. Yikes. We burnt about a gallon and a half of oil. All right, passengers, y'all got to get out. Passenger is ejected. Excellent. <laughs> I was right. Got it. Oh, oh, didn't miss anybody. I like how Wrath of Schwartz is like stuck in the woods somewhere. I don't know what to do with that is. Oh, can I get that guy in too? Oh, I can't. All right, we'll take this picture one more time and uh, let's get going. Uh, the airfield here is uh, Sierra Papa Hotel Zulu. Uh, we're in the middle of the Andes Mountains here. All right, let's go, go bouncy bounce over to the end of the runway and uh, end this airplane's uh, career uh, dig with dignity here. <laughs> I feel so wrong about this, but oh well, what are you going to do? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Could you imagine just like ripping down the runway like this? 
<laughs> I'll stay in the grass in case anybody wants to land. At least I'm being polite. <laughs> yeah, this thing wants to take off already. I'm super impressed. This is one of the few aircraft, by the way, that legally can take off with just three working engines. Awesome. Get ourselves plenty of room here. Remember, we're taking off at 9,000 feet here. So if you're looking for any sort of flights that involve excessive altitudes, again, this is a great place to start them from. You can actually go right over the coast there if you need to as well. Man, I could have landed on the grass. I don't know why I bothered landing on the tarmac at all. All right, here we go. Robert Fisher's like, gotta go. It looks like a pretty good lake to plant this thing. I feel like planting into the side of the mountain is just like too traditional. Got to, I think there's a lake right over there on the right. I'm going to go for that. The Rio Santo. Ugh. Remember, the reason I crashed myself at the end is Microsoft does not track your flight in the log if for some reason you crash. <laughs> All right, let's go park right here for a second. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure my damage is not enabled. Is enabled. I should, yep, I'm good. All right, let's break it. Go ahead and turn on my water injection above my head here. Give myself that little bit of boost. I'll have to show off my superchargers. We don't need them at this altitude. And here we go. I feel so bad for these engines. Sorry, engines. Sorry. It's when you feel worse for the engines than you feel for the plane. Look at this. Oh, there's the water injection light coming on. And I'm at full throttle, and the aircraft isn't even producing full power right now. Now, the reason for that, of course, is uh, as you probably know. One, two, three. Not that the cow flaps are going to matter. We're going to overheat and crash anyway. All right, here we go. Never put the flaps down. Yes. I think we uh, we have an anniversary coming up, by the way. Uh, it's going to be our one year. That's going to be uh, basically at the end of August. I'm thinking of uh, kind of doing like a fun little training flight with everybody in like 172s or something. I think that could be just kind of fun. Or, of course, we go back to where we started, which was uh, Scotland. Man, this uh, flight does not want you to take off. All right, get it to full power. I'm going to go ahead and pull back nice and gently. Oh, this thing does not want to go up. Right, the landing gear. And I just need to find myself a nice lake. <laughs> Let's do it, do it. Thanks, Riceless. You've been watching me way too long. Sometimes I can't put up with me, trust me. So it's funny, my uh, flight instructor likes to use the term golden and prime all the time. So it's just kind of one of those moments. I was like, was that more of a prime landing or would you consider it more of a gold? What are you doing, War? <laughs> more of a prime landing or was it more of a gold landing? Of course, he sees this later on. Oh, that looks good right there. I get a little bit more altitude. Oh, it does not want to climb. <laughs> That's the best I got. I'm at full throttle. It just doesn't want to go up. Come on. Oh, yeah, look at this. Going swimming. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Not the... Oh, ah. <laughs> All right, folks. Have a great night, and we'll see you in two weeks. Enjoy.